Hello everyone, my name's Sebastian and welcome back to Shark Programming. Now, I've had a question come in. If I could place, uh, tell a bit more about how arrays work. I used it in the uh, text-based adventure game. I used them there for the inventory system and apparently it was a bit messy <laughs> and not really understandable. Uh, so I'm going to go through the three dimensions of arrays. Uh, one dimension, two dimensional and three dimensional. We're going to put something in those dimensions uh, at a specific location and we're then going to write them out. Uh, to take a look at how they actually function uh, and how they they write out and and to see how it works Okay, so the for the one dimensional uh, You're gonna have to imagine a bookshelf, right? Okay, so you have all your books and you can then place them uh, All along the x-axis of the bookshelf, right? So here we've got three spots meaning it starts from zero goes to one and then two that's three spots Okay, that's how that works So when we're gonna write that out uh, we're obviously going for a, a a for loop to write it out that goes to uh, to two starts from zero and then moves to up to two and writes it out uh, all in all three times. Uh, so we're going to put something in it in the one direction uh, dimensional. So here uh, insert into the array one dimensional and here it is. So it looks like this. You say uh, actually let's talk about the declaration first. So you go up here, you say string. You put these square brackets and you give it a name. I call it array one, di uh, one dimensional. And then equals new string and then uh, brackets again. And then you set the uh, the number of uh, slots you want in it. And it could be anywhere from, I don't know if there's any limit actually. Uh, there must be, I don't know, uh, <laughs> go look it up. Uh, so obviously you can do this with both strings and arrays, uh, or sorry, strings and ints. As we have talked about before, the difference between strings and array or oh, flopping L. <laughs> the difference between strings and ints is that strings contain words and ints contain numbers. Uh, I just did it with words because they're a bit easier and a bit more visual than just having numbers write out. So uh, we put something in it. So we write out uh, array one dimensional and then choose a space on that, a slot on that, which shows the first slot which would be all in all uh, when it goes from zero and then to one and then to two. That's how it goes. So it'll be on the middle location and it, it's going to say hello world. Now, if we're going to look at how it writes out, so here it is, write out array. And this is for the one dimensional. So we only set one value for, for, uh, in which we're going to use in the for loop. It's called A. Uh, so we say A is zero. So it starts from zero. It says it will check for A uh, is less than two. Uh, so for the first write out, a is going to be zero. So it then writes out the value of a, uh, which is going to be zero, and then it goes down and checks if array one dimensional uh, at the slot of a. So whatever value a is, it will check that slot, and say if that is null, as in if that's empty and never been changed, uh, it's going to do whatever's in these brackets, and that is write out the word empty. Okay, so if if the slot is empty, the one that we're looking at, it's going to write out empty. It's pretty simple. Otherwise, it's going to go down and say console write line and then at this location here It's going to write out the value of that a slot in the uh, one dimensional array So whatever value uh, a is it's going to write that out here unless it's empty Okay, so we've only filled out one location and that is the first location or the first slot uh, But please keep in mind it does go from zero and up uh, so at, at the middle uh, when we get to the middle of this at the array, uh, we're going to have a word writ uh, written out on screen saying hello world. Let's check that out actually. So we started out, we booted up, and it, I set it to also write out, you can tell here it's going to write out the value of A. So first we start at slot 0 as it, as it goes, uh, and that's empty. Then we look at slot number 1, and it says hello world. And then we look at slot 2, and again that's empty. So close that. Now for the uh, two dimensional. Okay, so I uh, to insert something into the true dimensional, uh, you're gonna first have to declare it. <laughs> Forgot that again. Uh, so it's, I obviously did a string again because it's much more visual, and uh, you have to do a comma. Now this comma just says that we are looking at both a an x-axis and a y-axis. And as I say out here in the comments, you can see that uh, for the first one-dimensional array, the number three is the x-axis value. Now here I used three for all of them, so it's a bit confusing, but uh, you can just take them as they, you know, appear. So, so for the two-dimensional, uh, the first three is the x-axis, the second three is the y-axis. So now it's a bit more coordinate system-ish. 
uh, and it's going to be a lot more difficult to figure out once we get to the three dimensional. Uh, but I set the values of them to both be three. So we've got uh, three, th uh, three slots along the X axis and then three slots along the Y axis. But how it works is it will first go and check the uh, number zero, zero as in the starting point, and it'll go check 0, 1. So it keeps uh, going along the line, uh, along the first Y axis, and then along the uh, the X axis, if that makes sense. I think it does. Uh, so when we write it out, it looks like this. So I declare two values, X and Y, uh, and, and we do the first for loop for the X axis, and then, oh, wait a minute. I might actually, I might actually have switched those around. As it turns out, apparently I wasn't the biggest idiot as I thought I was. It's it's actually correct and it didn't function right when I switched them around again. So, don't mind that. <laughs> Minor mistakes. Uh, mistakes were made. Uh, this is just professional content, you know. Uh, so again, for two-dimensional arrays, we do two for loops. Uh, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. So when we move along the x-axis for one, uh, let's say, for one more value, as in we move along from number zero, uh, and have checked all along the y-axis. So we go from 0, 0 to 0, 1 on the y-axis and then 0, 2 and then we drop down and we say now we're at 1, uh, 0. That would be number 1 on the x-axis, number 0 on the y-axis and then we move a step up saying okay now we're at uh, 1 for the y-axis and 1 for the or 1 for the x-axis and 1 for the y-axis if you follow that. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and, and do that. So we look at it like this. So we move along from point uh, zero, 0, and then to zero, 1, and then from zero, 2. And then we switch, so we now moved a step uh, to... What did we actually move? We moved a step to the right on the x-axis. So now we're at the first or the second location on the x-axis. And again, looking at all the y-axis values. And then going along the last uh, point of the x uh, axis and then looking at all the y axis again. And it says hello world again on location 1.1, which is where we set it. So that's good. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that lets me know that it works, which is brilliant. Uh, if you catch this, you're a genius, I think. You should, I mean, this is probably going to give you a lot of street cred as well. <laughs> okay, let's look at the three dimensional arrays. Now, this is going to be a little more tricky. Uh, you declare them like this with two commas, as in for setting three values. And it looks like this. I again uh, set it to 333. Three, three. Now, the first three being x axis, the other three being y axis, and the third being the c uh, or the set axis. Uh, to put something in it, you call it this, you give it a name, and you then do the numbers on which you want to put the word in. If you're doing a string, if you're doing an int, put the number in. And then you uh, declare it by doing three for loops. So now it gets a little more tricky and I'm not sure how to explain this. Uh, you have to imagine now a cube. Uh, just before we were looking at a flat square on the two dimensional and on the one dimensional, one direction, uh, one dimensional we were just looking at a flat line. So we're going from line to flat square and to now a cube. Okay, so three dimensional we're looking at the set axis uh, going along the bottom of the cube, the y-axis going along the sides of the cube, and the c-axis, or the z-axis, going into the cube. You get me? So, we have placed the Hello World on the first slot, or the second slot actually, sorry, uh, on the uh, x-axis, and again the second value on the y-axis, and the second value on the c-axis, or z-axis. Uh, so we move along and check for uh, check all the axi, axi, <laughs> axis, axis. I'm not sure. Uh, and then let them write out which value we're on, and then checks if they're empty, if they're not, or if they are, write empty. If uh, if not, write out hello world in which uh, there is one. Let's look at how it looks actually, because it's a bit difficult to explain. Okay, look, it looks super messy now. Uh, don't mind that. So, uh, as you can tell, it's looking at the starter location, as in the point. Of complete zero then we're moving along the this would be the x-axis so we're looking at the x-axis now and from going from zero alongside uh, the x-axis 
we're moving a step upwards on the y-axis, still at uh, zero on the z-axis, or z-axis. So we're looking at all the uh, x values, uh, moving a step up on the y-axis, looking at all this, all the x values again, and then moving a step more up on the y-axis, looking again at all the x values. And then once we get to, as you can tell here, we've moved along from zero on the y, to one on the y, and then two on the y. And then we're moving a step into the cube, so we're moving on to the uh, set axis. And then again, looking at all the x values, and then moving a step up and moving and looking at all the um, all the y values, but also uh, looking at <laughs> all the x, all the x values. This is, I mean, you're gonna have to download this and figure it out on your own if you're gonna do three dimensional uh, arrays. It's pretty messy. Uh, <laughs> It's a right mess, and I'm not 100% sure if this is correct. Actually, looking at this uh, from when it goes to, yeah, look at this. It might not actually be correct because, no way it is. It is. Sorry, it's me uh, fucking it up. So we move the step into the cube, and we're then looking at the uh, the y-axis, and then saying from the uh, from the first y-axis a value one, uh, looking at all the x values. And then look, going a step up again on the Y, uh, again inside of the cube, and then it goes all the way to the back of the cube, and again looks at uh, the set or the X values first, and then stepping it up on the Y, and then stepping up on the Y again. And if there were more layers in the set value, it would have gone a step backwards again, looking at the X, looking at the Y, and then you know keep going. Uh, so as as it is here, we put in uh, hello world on location 111, as in uh, one step on the x value, or the x axis, one step on the y axis, and again one step inwards on the c axis, or z axis. People say it differently, you have to make sure you're not many making any mistakes and confusing people even further. I hope this tutorial made sense to you, uh, guys out there who are having problems with arrays. I surely did my best. Uh, if not, Please let me know if there's anything you, you didn't understand. I will try to explain in the comments. And uh, I hope you have a great day. And I will see you for more sharp programming in the future. I am looking to do, as you can tell on title here, kind of a spoiler alert. We'll get to that next time. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did a rating, would be much appreciated. And do go ahead and subscribe for more. Now, my name was Sebastian. And this was Sharp Programming. I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.